Okay, I just got done watching a film that somehow has changed my life. I still think that Taxi Driver is the better movie, but I don't know, man. There's something seriously gargantuan, dense, and obtuse about this ominous fucking thing. The way that we slowly fade in from black and reveal the creepiest shot of a church that I've ever seen before. Right away and throughout, the film feels as if its, its very frames are actively being disturbed by an unseen, dark, supernatural force. I literally recoiled back in my seat, creeped out by the shot of this church, which that wasn't where I can be afraid of architecture. <laughs> Another thing that's striking about the overall cinematography is that it's so cold, so bleak, so ghostly looking, in that it's almost as if within every moment you feel like you're seconds away from a vicious jump scare. A jump scare that never arrives. So you're constantly charged and on edge, bewildered and, and taken off guard. Darkness of this movie looms overhead so much that I genuinely feel like my life, substantially, in some aspect, has changed after seeing this. And this stems from many layers of nihilistically placed concepts within this film. This is probably my favorite character and performance from Ethan Hawke. He is a monument here. His performance is so good. He is so dominant and fragile and completely in command of this performance. His performance is so good and authentic and alive that honestly, I believe he could convince a non-paying attention stranger that he truly was this character, this priest, and not Ethan Hawke. His non-verbal exchanges with Michael and scenes as simple as him walking around in a black trench coat is as engaging and as atmospheric as reading an addictive and heavy graphic novel. I find this to be a highly original story and overall narrative execution. But creepily and weirdly, it shares similarities and connections to Taxi Driver. I mean, this whole moment right here, I mean, come on! Totally Taxi Driver. And the movie is bizarrely littered with moments like this and they are fantastic. They remind me of the many connections one can find between Hereditary and Midsummer from Ari Aster, movies that I'm obsessed with. Reverend Toller's life is so dainty, claustrophobic, cramped, cramped, and joyless. Looking at his disgusting, and small living quarters, looking at the shitty way he treats himself, he's never having fun, probably sleeps like shit, <laughs> seems to have no friends, and almost completely oblivious to real life. This movie is shot like a horror film to me, and this movie is a spiral into utter madness. The decay of this environment and of the world from climate change in the, in the story, this all seems to be a reflection of his inner decay emerging outwards. The level of dark this movie has is fucking savage. The fact that Mary, who is wonderfully played by Amanda Seyfried, just an ordinary woman, <coughs> The fact that Mary has such a profound effect on Toller's life is jaw-dropping. The fact that our main character has been a raging fucking, fucking psychopath the entire time, just like De Niro, aka Taxi Driver, is next level creepy. I love Split from M. Night Shyamalan, and I love Unbreakable, and fuck it, I love Glass as well from the man. Anyways, the way that Split 
acknowledges Unbreakable to this day gives me goosebumps and that moment this movie feels like the split to Unbreakable or should I say Taxi Driver. By the way, these moments with scripture labeled on the walls tripped me out, especially when it was annoyingly in the way while these while these two were talking. It was so distracting. I was like, what? That's another thing that I completely was not anticipating. This movie is a complete mindfuck. The last 37 minutes contain some of the most unexpected series of mindfucks and what the fuck is going on and inducing sequences that I've seen in a while. From this moment on to the last credits, this movie just completely loses his mind and I, and I'm all here for it. I mean, the movie is essentially about a man's life that spirals out of control from meeting a chick whose significant other almost becomes a suicide bomber and then suddenly within its last few moments this movie not only channels taxi driver but goes completely just goes completely fucking elsewhere especially during this sequence i mean holy fucking shit this movie is loud it's out of control and i love it everything is fresh and so carefully framed and unusual <laughs> and the characters are observed so creatively and in such a surreal, otherworldly way that this movie feels like, to quote David Lynch, a moving painting. Though I would say a really creepy, trippy, mindfuck moving painting that's going to haunt me and fuck with me for the next few days. <laughs> I mean, the scene at the pollution site to honor Michael's last wishes the fact that Ethan Hawke almost goes complete suicide bomber, then wraps himself in barbed wire, then makes out with Amanda Seyfried before we aggressively cut the black out of nowhere. This breathing exercise leads to moments that scattered pieces of my brain across the floor. These moments in the third act are so unexpected and insane and packed and open to interpretation that I'm just emotionally all over the place. <laughs> Through the eyes of Reverend Toller, watching this film is equivalent to reading Virgil and that other poet guy wading through Dante's Inferno. Especially with the discovery of the headless body in the woods, that especially freaked me out. This movie is not better than Taxi Driver, but it's definitely just as good or equivalent to Taxi Driver. In a few years, Fuck it, you never know, I might change my mind. Honestly, if this movie came out around the same time as Taxi Driver, bruh. To think that this movie starts so simplistically and ends completely out of its mind. If you were looking for something to take your mind off of things, holy shit, have you found the right place. I mean, even Cedric the Entertainer was really good here. By the way, Reverend Toller being told that he has cancer, he responds by going home, turning off the lights, filling up a cup full of liquor, and dropping a ghastly load of pep Pepto Bismol in the middle of that bitch? What? That's got to be the most gnarly and darkly hilarious alcoholic beverage I've ever seen anyone take. I'm sorry that I'm late on this movie, but to be honest with you, I watched it in the perfect way plausible. I had no memory of the trailer, never knew the plot, but was always mesmerized by the imagery wherever I would see it. Watching this movie cold is my recommended route because I had no idea that the last few minutes would go so far off the rails. I'm not going to pretend that I 100% understood everything that happened within the last 30 to 40 minutes when things go completely bonkers. I have no idea what to think of that final kiss and fade to black currently. Is a lot of this just in his head and not literal in the final scenes? Is society slowly succumbing to madness like this man, Reverend Toller? I don't know and I'm not sure that I want to know. This movie is so good that the reception that Joker got should have been directed at this film 
instead of Joker. Joker is a good movie, but it's so overrated in my opinion. The cinematography here is so hauntingly perfect. It's as if Paul Schrader took a trip to a different dimension, filmed all this, and came back with, with this footage. The black levels in this thing are so insane. The resolution of the camera and its ability to pick up textures and imagery despite the dimness of the lighting is often just jaw-dropping. Many will find this movie to be too much, too political, and too preachy, in their opinion. And I was, I, I really just have to, I just really disagree. It's a boat that moves through rough waters, but, but still, I would disagree with those, with those kind of opinions. And to be honest, watching his sad, tragic life made me realize that I need to make more substantial moves in terms of bettering my own life right here and now, not tomorrow. I cannot have my life end up looking like his. By the way, that shot of him where he was just about to start chugging that fucking Drano liquid or whatever the fuck that was, Jesus Christ. This movie left me feeling like I watched a ghost story, There Will Be Blood, 2001, and Taxi Driver simultaneously with good results. Yeah, th this, this thing is nuts, but luckily for me, I loved it. It's a 10 out of 10. Again, I'm about to go watch thousands of videos and read a million fucking articles so I can get some help on figuring out what all this shit may potentially mean. Paul Schrader's mind is a meaningful but a seriously scary place. Cinema at its finest, boys.